In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a rollover tooltip glossary in Adobe Captivate. Okay, so I just got back from the Adobe Learning Summit in Las Vegas, Nevada. It was a fantastic conference. I got a chance to speak, but more importantly, I got a chance to talk with fellow Captivate users. And one such user actually asked me a really interesting question. They wanted to create rollover tooltip glossaries. In other words, rather than navigating to a separate page where that glossary exists for all the key terms and phrases, they wanted something simple and in the moment and immediate for their learners. So if there was an acronym or a phrase that the learner wasn't familiar with, they could either press the word or roll over their mouse and get an instant description of what that is. So I decided that I would uh, make a video rather than trying to explain it on the fly. And here's that video. Okay, so here's an example page where you might want to uh, define some keywords here. So here's how I would do it. There's probably more than one way you could do this, but this is my approach here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a rectangle shape like so, and I'm going to draw it over top of the word in question. This is for non-responsive design projects. You would probably have to switch to a static fluid box for this to work, but I'm just going to do it with non-responsive for right now. Now, a couple things we need to do. We need to, first of all, select use as a button. Uh, in this case here, I want to make this as inclusive as possible. So you can either roll over it for those mouse users out there, but for everyone else who has to press the uh, buttons on the screen with their finger or whatever, um, we're going to also include this as uh, something that learners can click on to see that definition as well. And of course, you could underline the word so that it stands out, make it seem like a hyperlink. That might help learners recognize that there is a, a tool tip here. Uh, let's do that. In fact, let me move this out of the way here and just give your learners a visual cue that this is something they can learn about. So we'll just click the underline uh, tool in the um, properties inspector and let's then place this shape, which is now used as a button over top. Now we need to first of all go into state view because we need to create the two unique states that will emphasize what this is all about. First one being the rollover and this one sort of takes care of itself. So let's go ahead and go into shapes here and what we'll do is we'll select um, this uh, rounded rectangular call out and we'll draw that onto the screen here approximately where you would expect that to be. We'll change the color a bit so it stands out and I'll make it 100% opacity so we don't see anything from behind it. And I'll just point it at the word itself there. That looks good. And uh, let's just add some text here. I have some nonsense text here I can just paste in. And what we'll do is we'll make sure it's colored with a nice contrast to that purple there. That looks good. So when someone rolls over this uh, shape used as a button, they'll see this. But we want to take care of those users who are have, have to press this. So we're going to create a new state, custom state, and we're going to call that clicked. Okay. And uh, what I'll do is I'll simply copy this rounded rectangle callout to our clicked state as well. So we'll see that whether we roll over or click it, that sort of thing here. Let's exit the state here. Uh, it's helpful to uh, label these objects. It's currently called Smart Shape 4, but uh, let's just put in Laboris definition. We know which button we're working with here. So like I said, the rollover effect takes care of itself. So if I was to preview this right now and move my mouse over it, you would see that, uh, that pop up. But for those users who aren't using a mouse, we want them to be able to click on this and see that definition as well. So we need to write a very little advanced action here. So let's go into project advanced actions and we'll call this, um, we'll call this something generic definition and uh, reveal. 
or something like that. You can call it whatever you want, whatever makes sense there. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the state of my laborious, laborious <laughs> definition uh, shape item here to clicked. I'm going to delay the next action by a literal number of seconds. So what I would recommend that you do is to read that out loud um, and then sort of time it. And if it takes five seconds to read that definition, maybe set this for six seconds or seven seconds just to account for those readers who maybe read a little slower. I'll set this for seven seconds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the state of that very same object back to normal. So it goes away when they're done. So we can save this as an action, but there's a real good opportunity here. If you're going to do this uh, dozens of times or perhaps even hundreds of times throughout your e-learning course, you can save this as a shared action. So again, it's, it's labeled well, definition reveal, it's not specific. And we can just say, here's the button that we will press. Shared actions are kind of like fill in the blank advanced action. So what's being saved here is the structure of the advanced action. And in this case here, we can apply different uh, information to this shared action uh, so that it applies to different buttons and different rollovers and so forth throughout your course here. So here we'll just put the clicked state of the button. And we're going to need to make this variable as well. So we're going to tick that off number of seconds to delay. And then the final thing will be the normal state of the button. Okay. So we save that click. Okay. So I can go ahead and close this with our uh, laborious definition object selected. We'll go to actions and we will select execute shared action and we'll click on the drop down to make sure that definition reveal is selected. If there are other shared actions, it may not automatically select, but in this case, it's the only one I've got. And I'm going to then click on action parameters and apply some values to this here. So we'll start off the button that we're pressing is laborious definition. The clicked state is the click state. The number of seconds, let's go with five for right now. But again, you could edit this and change that value and certainly change the value for other times throughout your e-learning course that you're using this shared action. And then finally, we select the normal state here and then we just press save. So let's do a quick preview and see how this looks and how it works. Okay, so here we go. So obviously the underline helps it. It helps to accentuate the fact that this is something that, you know, I could click on or roll over. So when I roll over, I see the definition. If I click on it, I see the definition. It stays for that time, that enough time to read it. If they need to read it again, they can always click on it again um, if necessary. So you've got both your rollover effect and your click effect for these rollover glossary terms. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.